uh, will be by uh, Daniel Everett, uh, who works at the Global Alliance of, uh, for TB Drug Development in New York. <coughs> and he received his medical degree from Harvard Medical School and served on the faculty of both the Harvard Medical School and University of Pennsylvania. And he will be presenting on the randomized trial of the bactericidal activity of eight weeks treatment with moxifloxacin PA824 and pyrazinamide in drug sensitive and multi drug resistant tuberculosis. Daniel. Thank you very much and good afternoon. I'm very pleased to be able to present the results of our phase 2B study of a new regimen uh, to treat TB, both drug sensitive and drug resistant TB. Um, let me just give you a little bit of background about the regimen first. It's a three drug combination, three oral drugs given once a day. It includes the investigational drug, not yet approved, of PA24, which is in the chemical category uh, called called, uh, called um, nitroimidazole, uh, the other antibiotic moxifloxacin, and then the drug that's been used for a long time for TB, pyrazinamide. Uh, this is one of a series of development studies we've done of this uh, combination, which I will refer to as PAMZ or PAMZ. Um, it, we started uh, in the mouse model of TB infection and found that this three drug combination reduced the amount of uh, bacteria that could be uh, harvested from the mice of lungs over a, a, an eight week period substantially greater than the standard therapy with isoniazid, rifampicin, and pyrazinamide in the mice. We took it then into a two-week bactericidal activity study, and exactly two years ago at this meeting, we reported the results of that, which again showed that the PAMZ regimen reduced the amount of um, bacteria that could be recovered and cultured out of sputum compared to the standard of care, the HRZE, or the, the rifampin, isoniazid, pyrazinamide, and ethambutol regimen. So, Building on those results, we moved into this phase 2B study, and let me just review the design of the study here briefly. We call this the NC002 study. NC just stands for new combination. This is the first study that's ever been done that's enrolled both multidrug resistant and drug sensitive patients and treated them with the same regimen. Because INH and rifampicin are not part of the regimen, um, this should be effective in patients with TB sensitive to the drugs in the regimen, regardless of whether they're technically drug sensitive or drug resistant based on conventional um, therapy. So we enrolled, uh, the drug sensitive patients were fully randomized either to PAMZ with the PA24 dose at 200 milligrams or the, P the PA24 dose at 100 milligrams. Moxifloxacin was given at the standard dose of 400 milligrams, and based on modeling work we had done, uh, we chose 1,500 milligrams as a standard single dose, no weight adjustment for the pyrazinamide. Or they were randomized to the standard HRZE, weight banded as usually given. Um, 60 patients in each group, and the drug-resistant patients, of course, could not be uh, randomized to the standard HRZE therapy. They were just given the PAMZ at the higher dose of 200 milligrams. We aim to enroll up to 50 patients. They were treated for two months, daily therapy. We had 16-hour pooled uh, sputum samples taken uh, weekly throughout the period, and then a subset of 15 in each group were hospitalized in an early bactericidal activity study where for the first week, uh, for the first week they had daily samples of sputum, the second week it was every other day, and then they were discharged and like everybody else went on to weekly um, uh, the investigational sites, we had six sites in South Africa, two sites in Tanzania. In South Africa, two of the sites at the Tembisa Hospital uh, and um, at uh, 
uh, under the task applied sciences at um, a Brooklyn chest, we enrolled MDR patients. What was um, very unique for this study too is we did quantitative colony counts in the sputum of cultures in on auger plates, and that was done across four laboratories. Um, give special thanks to the lab heads and to, to Kathy Eisenach who worked with us to standardize this across four labs for this uh, uh, sort of delicate, detailed, quantitative analysis. Just some enrollment uh, demographic characteristics. Um, we enrolled 207 patients. The average age was 31, about typical for our study, 65% men. Of note, uh, we did enroll 20% were HIV infected, 40 patients. We allowed HIV patients to have CD4 counts down to 200. Um, and as you can see, the split between black and, black and mixed ethnicity. Um, one thing I should say is that we enrolled approximately 60 in each of the drug sensitive groups. We ended up with uh, enrolling 26 patients in the drug resistant group. Because we got the resistance to pyrazinamide back between one and three weeks after enrollment, those who turned out to be resistant to pyrazinamide had to be removed from the study. And we actually had nine patients in the drug resistant group that went full the, through the full eight weeks and provided full data um, for the, the primary analysis. So our primary endpoint was the reduction in colony forming units grown out of the sputum in auger uh, over the eight week period. This is a depiction of the regression lines using a joint Bayesian nonlinear mixed effects modeling uh, over the eight weeks. Um, a regression line was built for each individual patient, and then this is the mean of these. So as you can see, the uh, the the, the positive uh, Xs are the, the MPAZ, the PAMZ group at the 200 milligrams. They had the greatest uh, reduction in colony counts over time. Next was the 100 milligram group of the PAMZ. And then almost superimposable was the HRZE. It's labeled here as Rifafor, which was the brand used in South Africa and Tanzania that we used. Um, and the MDR group. Uh, this graph does not show any of the variability. That's shown with the actual numbers here. And you can see the number in each group that contributed to the full analysis through the eight weeks. So a little bit less than 60 with a smaller number in the MDR group. So converting this to the mean daily, log daily reduction in counts at the, uh, the, the 200 milligram PAMZ group was the 0.155 per day versus the HRZE, which was the 0.112, and that was statistically significantly different. Another way of looking at this was the time to positivity in liquid culture. So the number of hours it takes, and this is a log transformation, until the TB grew to a standard positive sample. So a, a better result here is when it takes longer to get positive or it's truly negative at 42 days, you stop the cultures. And this gave very similar results. The one difference here was that the 200 and the 100 milligram group of PA824 actually had the same results. Um, and then Rifafor and, and the MDR patients were, were very similar. Um, because of the narrowness and the variability, um, this did not meet statistical significance. But some of the other secondary endpoints, let me briefly show you time to culture conversion. So this is the amount of time until an individual patient first has a negative culture. And we had statistically significant differences both on solid culture and on liquid culture at the 200 milligram uh, dose of PA24 with the M and the Z compared compared to HRZE. So you can see the median was 28 days on solid culture to negativity 49 days in liquid culture, which is more sensitive to grow out the slower growing bacteria versus um, the HRZE, which was back at 35 days for solid culture and 56 days for liquid. Now moving on, if we look at how many patients had a completely negative culture at the end of eight weeks, 
again, in solid culture, many more will go to negative than in liquid culture. Liquid culture is much more sensitive to pick up those slow-growing bacteria. And at both the doses of the PAMZ group, um, we had much higher uh, rate of negative cultures than the Rifafor group. In fact, at the 200 milligram dose, almost twice as many patients had negative cultures at the end of eight weeks compared to the HRZE, the standard noted here as Rifafor. Um, one other way of looking at it is we also looked at the first 14 days, or here days 7 to 14, at the log colony forming unit decreases. And then those patients at day seven to 56. So that was looking at how, if you did an early 14-day bactericidal activity study, how, how well would that predict what you would actually see at eight weeks for at least the HRZE standard and the PAMZ? And what you can see here is, is an extremely tight correlation, correlation coefficients of over 90%, close to 100%, um, which again shows for these regimens and these, this patient population done this way, a very nice correlation. Safety findings, just broadly, one way of looking at it is just to look at the, um, the, the, the NIH grades one, two, three, four, what percent of patients had at least one adverse event um, in these uh, grading categories? And this is across the different arms. So the 100 milligram group, the 200 milligram group, the standard HRZE, and the MDR. And it was quite similarly spread across the groups. Um, one caveat I can note is the 200 milligram PAMZ group, there were a bit more in the grade three and four category compared to the HRZE group. But actually, the 100 milligram PAMZ group had uh, actually small numbers, but half the number grade four is compared to the HRZE group. So key findings, just a summary, the PAMZ regimen was statistically significantly better than the HRZE control for the primary endpoint reduction in colony forming units over 56 days for the drug sensitive patients at the higher dose. Um, there was a more rapid time to culture conversion and a higher culture conversion to negative at eight weeks, nearly twice the number converted in liquid culture of the drug sensitive patients that were treated. There was no significant difference in the response for the 20% the of patients who were HIV infected. We looked at that as a covariate, no effect, no real difference in adverse events. Uh, about half the patients were on antiretroviral therapy coming into the study. Some had it started during the study. Uh, no dose adjustments were given. Safety overall was comparable across the groups. So our next steps, we're moving into a phase three study, which we're planning to start um, before the end of the year. Um, we, we're delighted to have various partners joining us. Um, I'll just give a preview of the design of this study. This will be include 1,500 patients, 300 per arm, uh, being conducted at about 50 sites in about 15 countries around the world across many different geographic areas. Very similar, our unified pathway of including both drug-sensitive, drug-resistant patients. The drug-sensitive patients will be remandomized either to the six months of the standard HRZE therapy or to four months of treatment, uh, either at the 100 or the 200 milligram uh, dose of PA24 with amoxifloxacin and pyrazinamide. The drug-resistant patients will be treated for six months at the full dose. Um, uh, and will be evaluated for results similar to uh, the drug-sensitive patients. Um, this design has been discussed at length with both the FDA and the European Medicines Agency, uh, and um, uh, we will be going forward. 
Finally, I'd like to give sincere acknowledgments first to all the patients in uh, Tanzania and uh, South Africa who agreed to participate. Also, the volunteer community advisory boards that helped with uh, research literacy training, the lead investigators and colleagues who I have listed here, and finally to our supporters and funders, particularly Australian Aid and the, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So I'll finish with that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. The floor is open for uh, any clarification questions. I see four microphones. So microphone one. Uh, thank you very much. Congratulations, very nice presentation. Uh, maybe I miss, but I don't know what is the um, consolidation treatment is composed by rifampicin, sony acid, or the same drugs for this treatment and for the next protocol. So the comparison treatment? No, sorry, the consolidation treatment regimen for this patient oh, after the it, two months. It, it's the standard four drugs HRZ for two months followed by four months of the isoniazid and rifampicin given daily, very the, standard. And in the, for the future protocol yes. in the, in the PA uh, arm, it's the same? Two yeah. months more? Uh, oh, it's the same regimen for either four or six months, the same thing throughout okay. the therapy, the PAMZ. Thank you. Okay, next. Um, so what, what can you tell us about the hepatotoxicity of the regimen? Well, uh, we are watching it like hawks, uh, any potential hepatotoxicity. Um, dealing with developing a regimen, obviously, PA824, which is the new drug, um, has the adverse effects of the company it keeps. So we do have some aminotransferase elevations uh, with the HRZ regimen, as one would expect, and also associated with the, the pyrazinamide and the moxifloxacin. Um, we don't have any evidence yet that PA824 increases or uh, has any impact on that, but again, so far it's small numbers and we'll be watching that very closely moving into phase three. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the presentation. Um, the recent study in T CHL 2012 showed that m replacement of isoniazid with moxifloxacin in HREZ is not only inferior but also maybe superior. Do you have any plan to compare your regimen with combination of moxirifampicin, etambutol, and pyrazinamide in some stage? Um, let me just be sure I understand your question. So it's other studies substituting moxifloxacin into no, the regimen? No, isoniazid is um, replaced by moxifloxacin. So moxi plus etambutol plus presinamide and rifampicin has been shown to be not only infer not, not inferior but also is superior to um, the standard regimen that we use at the moment. My question is, are you going to compare your regimen with this superior um, new regimen that is explained in Seattle in 2012? Um, our new regimen, the PAMZ, in the study in phase three is only being compared to the standard HRZ regimen. We're not comparing it to any other alternative. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to ask real quick, is there, is there evidence that pyrazinamide past two months is efficacious? It's it's my understanding that once you get past those acidified compartments, it, it doesn't really have its efficacy. So um, s sort of it, it follows on the first question, you know, what are the presuppositions in using it uh, for four to six months? One, I can't, oh, there you are. <laughs> uh, this is on. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, one aspect is it's certainly used commonly in drug-resistant TB, whether it works or not, well beyond two months, um, uh, and hasn't, you know, usually it's a question about safety, and that's not an issue. Um, we have certainly found in the mouse model treating that it gives substantial extra benefit um, going on to a three or four month treatment, um, and then stopping and looking at no recurrence 
three months later in the mice. Um, so we feel in this particular regimen that it is an important piece. We would not want to treat with only two drugs um, uh, for the full time. So um, we're just moving ahead, you know, based on the evidence we have to treat for four or six months with, with the entire regimen. Okay, thanks. Thank you.